Today I have lots of bird inspiration for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. This is be a little bird house. This is a little thrifted house form. These little birds are thrifted. I got a big package of birds and leaves, butterflies, frogs, all kinds of goodies. This is a little bit of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to use a pick. Using a baby wipe and a little bit of that antiquing wax, I'm just going to rub this together and then rub it all over this little form. Be sure when you thrift that you really give your items a good cleaning. You don't know what kind of dust and bacteria you're bringing home, so be sure you clean it. That is already done. And then now on my clean dry surface, I'm adding the stain. It's going to warm it up. It's going to take that orangey look down a bit. And I like it. I want to give it a backing. Going to make this look somewhat like a little birdhouse. So I'm going to cut this piece down and it fits perfectly so that we can add some hot glue and it will look like it belongs there. I love Dollar Tree ribbon and I just love Dollar Tree crafting items. They have really got some good stuff. Even with the price increase, I've found that I'm still finding, you know, they're bringing new things in the store and I'm very happy about that. Now I'm just going to trim off what I don't need along the bottom and on the top because the back is already perfectly fit. And this is how it's going to look before we put our little birds in there. Nice. Almost looks like a screen door or some chicken wire, doesn't it? Now I'm going to use some jute and we're going to make some little bird nest. Just twirling it around my fingers, twisting it into you know, not tied, but somewhat of a little knot. It kind of sticks to itself because it's fuzzy. And then I'm going to decide where I want my little bird nest to be. One in the top corner. And just press that down. Watch your fingers. Wear your protectors if you need to. Remember, cool temperature glue so you're more safe. And I'm going to take the biggest bird and put him right in the top corner. These birds could be painted if you wanted to. It's almost like a plaster, like maybe somebody had done a project because it was a bag full of them, and maybe someone made these, handmade them. They just never got around to doing anything with them, but they are very happy in my craft supply because I have been using them like crazy and I love them. Look how sweet the little bird is in the corner. Oh, they're so cute. I love little birdies. They're so cute and graceful and they're just sweet. I love to watch them. Now just take whatever pick that you like. Pull these apart. They can be trimmed down. I like this because it looks like grass. And I like the grassy look. You know, not all birds nest in trees. Some of them actually nest on the ground. Birds, not just ducks. Some regular old birds like to nest on the ground. But we want to give them a little bit of security and privacy, so we're going to add some grass here and there. I'm going to trim the pieces up so that I get exactly the length that I want and the look that I want. You know, Dollar Tree has a lot of really nice greenery this uh, spring and summer. I have noticed they have fern pieces, they have I think they had eucalyptus. I know they even have olive branches. They are really nice. I've seen them, I haven't bought them, but yeah, they're really, really nice. Most of my greenery comes from the thrift store. I'm blessed with a very, very good um, Goodwill bins, and I get so much from there. But even if you don't have exactly what I have, you can go and find something that you like. My channel is all about making it my own and you make it your own exactly how you like it. I think most of us crafters want to give you inspiration, you know, but you don't have to do it exactly like we do it. Just watch, enjoy it, get inspired, take away from it what brings you joy and what is helpful to you and just leave the rest, right? So the last little bird has got to go on top. She's not on her nest right now. Maybe she's a baby and she's learning to fly. 
So right on the top, perfect. This is such a sweet little bird. So we're gonna start off with some thrifted items. This is a wooden box that already is perfect, won't need any work. Little bird house here. A dowel rod. I have territorial beige and white paints. A variety of paintbrushes. Some little chipboard or wooden birds and some foam. Plus we're gonna need some florals, scissors, glue guns, and wire cutters, and whatever else we might add. So I'm gonna start out by taking a look at this birdhouse, deciding what to do, and it's already weathered and aged looking on the top, so we're gonna leave it just as is. I'm gonna take this brown paint and I'm going to cover all of the pink with this paint. So now I'm going to color my little birds here. I'm gonna use this acrylic paint. I'm just putting it on a little scrap of paper and kind of a little stiff brush here and I'm gonna just kind of stipple and rub this paint into the wood. I want it to have a little bit of a whitewashed effect I don't want it to be solid white. Plus, if you get too heavy handed with paint on these with the cutouts, it'll be kind of gloppy and and uh, you'll see little drips inside. And this is what it'll look like when you're done. You're going to do both of them. Then I'm going to prepare my picks. Just cutting off any little random edges that need to be cut and straightening my wires out. I'm going to trim down my greenery branch here. And I do later add on more greenery and more florals. So you just get what you like. I wanted mine to have kind of a woodsy, wild look. So those are the flowers, the flowers that I chose. I'm going to stack up a little bit of this leftover, um, some foam that I got, I think out of an Amazon box, so that I can get that block up a little bit higher. Just adding another glue stick putting a good bit of glue there on that block, put it in the bottom, and then I will add some glue to the top of this one. There's no real need to remove that plastic off. You can if you want to, but it won't be seen, so I just left it on. Okay, so it's almost flush with the top. I'm going to take a 12-inch dowel rod, and that's going to be in the center. I'm going to go ahead and press it down. This is what's actually going to hold the birdhouse later. But for now, it's going to give me an, uh, a reminder of where I need to put my florals and my greenery. I'm starting with just a couple of these little floral picks. Again, kind of a wild, wildflower look. And the arrangement won't be very symmetrical. It's going to be kind of crazy too, like if you saw it growing in nature. So. I'm calling it cottage style, but it could also be a bit of a, maybe a rustic look as well. I'm just going to each of the corners here. Some of my stems are a little bit flimsy. They're not really very sturdy. Okay, so I put one in the middle close to that rod, and then I'm going to add my boxwood in add that all around so that you don't see a lot of that bottom when you get done. You want to make sure that that doesn't show. You could use green foam and then that'll help camouflage that or you can add moss or anything like that to the bottom if you would like. So now I've chosen some of these little, they almost look like daisies and I'm just going to add those here and there around the arrangement. When you cut these off of your your picks or your stems, be sure that you cut them in a variety of heights so that you can have some tall, some short. And don't just, you don't want to just stick them straight down in the top. You want to put them at angles, you want to fill in the empty spots, you want to have some bending downward, some, you know, maybe with a little twist in the stem. I wanted this to look like, you know, maybe I took a walk down the road and I saw this growing on the edge of a field. Growing against an old 
weathered fence post. So this is another bit of greenery that I have. It's almost like fern, and I just had a few of these pieces. All of what you see in there came from the thrift store. So all of these florals are thrift store finds. And I don't think that I have found anything even similar at Dollar Tree. So for the value, I really, I think that uh, you just can't beat the thrift store florals. These are like a grass pick. I had three of those, so I'm just kind of adding those in in a triangular um, pattern, maybe. Spreading them out a little bit. So we're going to look at our arrangement from all angles and see if it's how we like it. Always turn it around, look for bald spots, look for empty spots. I know some people use uh, Lazy Susan underneath their arrangement so that they can turn it when they're arranging. Now I'm adding in some, this reminds me of rosemary. I have two big rosemary bushes that I've grown from little babies in my backyard and that's exactly what these little picks look like. Okay, so with that part done, we're going to go back over here and we're going to weather down our dried birdhouse. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of dry brush that on there. I got a little bit heavy on the side. That's okay. It's just paint. You can always fix it. I'm going to put it on the little peg where the birds can stand. I'm going to get the sides and the back. As you can see, this arrangement will be made to be seen from all sides. Just going back over where I got a little too heavy with that white, with a little bit of that brown. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Weather it down a little bit. And I think it looks good. So now we've got to find a way to connect this to this. And since it's on a point, we're going to have to drill it. So here is my DeWalt drill. I'm not sponsored. I just love this drill. And I'm going to drill a hole. Now, I got a little bit messy. I had to pull it toward me and I got out of the camera. And it went sort of off to an angle. But I did fix that. But I made kind of a mess when I did it. But I'm going to fix that. It's a craft and we can always cover up our boo-boos, right? Nothing a little glue gun and rope won't fix. So I'm just taking some of this. It's like a yarn and it's beige. I'm just going around that little hole where it is hot glued in. So I did put glue in the hole, put the stick in there, let it dry, and now I'm going over it with, um, going around it with this yarn. And it is nicely covered. And it doesn't stand out, and you would think that this was intentional. See there? Looks fine. Now I gotta decide which bird goes where. And so this little bird that's already on a perch, I think would be good to put on the bird house. I'm going to cover up that hole. You won't even see that. And place him down. And his little friend is going to stand on the box below. A little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to just use my fingers down there on the bottom edge of the box as a guide. And press him down. And here is our arrangement. Again, I'm going to be checking it from all sides. And you can see too how it looks. I like the grass making a little bit of a higher um, layer back there in the back behind the birdhouse. It looks like he's just nestled down in there and quite happy in his little home. And if the wind doesn't blow this away, I plan on putting this on my screen. I found this one at the thrift store. Love it. I got this one at Dollar Tree. And they have several different styles, and this one was thrifted as well. We're going to start off with the one with the metal top. And I want to cover that because I thought these little pieces of wood chips look very much like shingles. So I'm going to try my hand at doing shingles. I have three inches here, so I'm just going to divide this into three sections. Just marking it off with my ruler, and then I'm going to turn my ruler to the side so I can make lines to make it easier to guide where I'm gluing down my little shingles. 
All right, so I'm just going to use hot glue, but if you want this to be permanent or to put it outside, you're going to need to use a different type of glue. Maybe something like E6000 would be good. All right, so I'm just going to show you how I do this. These shingles are not going to fit exactly across the bottom, so I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit, but that is so easily done. They are so very thin that they just split when you press down on them. So I'm holding it from the underneath side and pressing down on the edge of that little um, tin there, and it just snaps right off the perfect measurement. How about that? You could also use popsicle sticks and cut those down if you wanted to, if you had some of the thin ones, and make shingles of your own. Now I'm going to go up to the next line. I'm going to go right under that line because I want to make sure that my shingle overlaps about probably an eighth of an inch over the bottom line. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth so that I have the broken shingle on opposite sides. So then I'm going to glue that one down and continue along. Going on the top row, I want to make sure that that top row sticks up just a little bit over the peak. And then I'm going to start on the other side. Now I use baby wipes with my antiquing wax just to give it more of a... Um, I like to use this to distress. So I'm going to use just a downward stroke here and just press that onto the wood and then drag it down. I'm going to do it on both sides and then continue to blend it and push it around until it is the, the color and texture that I like. It looks old, it looks like it's been outside, and it looks weathered, and I like that. I love rustic, cottagey, weathered looks. And I think that I accomplished that with this. What do you think? All right, so now I'm gonna embellish it. My cord came from uh, Amazon, but you can get some now at Dollar Tree. I was so surprised. It's in the, like, the little floral or garden type section, so hopefully you can find some at your store. I think they come in a three pack. Um, different types of these little cordings or trims, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to trim off here and there where I think it would look good. I didn't want to paint it because I really like the wood that is used on this birdhouse. I like the variation in the light and the dark, and you can see all the rings and lines. I think that's pretty. So there's one piece, and then I looked at it, of course, from all angles, and I'm going to add some on the bottom and around the sides of the birdhouse. Be careful and make sure you protect your fingers. You can get those little finger protector, little silicone tips at Dollar Tree if you're lucky. I have seen them there every time I've gone. So fortunately my store stays in stock and they really do make a difference. But I got in a hurry and I didn't use them today. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around and then tack it down in the back, trim off what we don't need. And this is how it looks so far. You could, of course, leave it just like this if you like it. But I noticed that there's just a tad of a gap, of course, between my shingles and the tin roof that's underneath. So I decided just to use a little bit of jute and cover that gap up. Now, what you could do if you have a like the glue guns that have the little detail tip on them, that would be perfect for this situation. But I don't have that, so I did the best I could with my glue gun, which I've always had you know, pretty good luck with. And I got a neat finish. Beside, besides the fact that that's a really big gun, it does give me a nice little finish. Trim it off on the edges where it's even. And then this is how it's gonna look. I'm cutting off my fuzzies. Some people use a lighter to kind of burn that off. If you feel inclined, you can do that. So these cute little patches or, I don't know, what are these? I don't know what they are, but they're they're made of thread. I'm gonna use this little bird here to go right over, like he's sitting out there, peeking in his house. This is so cute. I've been waiting to use these little, little bird patches for a long time, and I think it's a perfect way to use it right here. He looks like he belongs there. What do you think? I like it. This is my big birdhouse. And I mean it is big. I decided to clean it up by wiping it down and then just sanding off the top of it and then all around the sides and the bottom, just giving it a light sanding so that my stain will be even when I put it on. 
I've got some, this is like a, a wood stain and it is something that I got from Plaid. I am a Plaid ambassador and it is in the color gray. They do have a dark one too that's like a brown, but I wanted to use the gray here. Don't be disturbed by the color when you put it on because it's not gonna stay this way. The longer you leave it on, the darker it will be. But I wanted mine to be more of just a wash. So I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, which is fairly dry, and I'm gonna wash the rest of it off. It gives a very subtle gray color or gray tint to the wood. And I like that. I like that here because I think it's going to be really good for the technique that we're going to use. This is the most detailed of the three, but I don't want you to be discouraged by the work that goes into it because believe me, the results are going to be so worth it. All right. And if you don't have a good thrift store and you don't have a place where you can find, you know, bird houses then if you want to buy something new or use something you already have in your yard take it down sand it and give it a little facelift so i'm taking a stencil brush here which has very stiff little bristles and i'm just dipping straight into that antiquing wax this is not watered down i went straight into it because i want this to be very rich and dark so that's what i'm doing and i'm just kind of stippling it down in all those cracks because it gives it a little more depth. It makes the recessed parts actually look like they're deeper than they are. And I like the detail of this. For some reason, it has given me some serious mushroom cap vibes. I like that. Do you see how it got kind of, um, when I was doing it, it got little splatters. So I said, you know what? That's a little happy mistake that Bob Ross talks about. I'm gonna go with it. So I'm just taking a watered down version of my wax and just kind of raking my finger across those stiff bristles and splattering paint all around it and i love the look of this i'm gonna fix my little bird perch just i wiped it down i had a little mess there just wiped it off the baby wipe it came off nicely and then fixed it back put some more color back onto it exactly where i wanted it to be and then just continued to go around here flicking that paint all over the place I'm redoing the bottom, and I do have a little bit of a mess along the bottom. My lines are not perfectly straight, but I'm okay with that, and I encourage you to be okay with that too, because this is a rustic look, and it really makes this birdhouse look so different than how I started. That's the great thing about crafting. There's no right or wrong, right? You just do what makes you happy and brings you joy, and I always encourage uh, my viewers and subscribers to keep that in mind when you're crafting. All right, so these stickers came from Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of these kinds. They're kind of um, different styles, but they're raised. And I really, I really enjoy the look of this. And it fits perfectly around the little opening to the birdhouse. Is that not the cutest little cottage core birdhouse you've ever seen? But wait, it gets better. I'm going to take these little corner pieces and just kind of Give it a little extra something. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think this is really cute. And there's four, so it works great. I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick so I can line it up and kind of get it, you know, not perfectly straight, but pretty straight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, and then so it's kind of framed out. The front of the house is framed out, and I like that. But you don't have to do it. You know, whatever you like. And there are ones that have keys on them and all kinds of stuff. So just be creative and and do what feels right to you. Oh, isn't it a beauty? And then I thought, you know what? What would make this even more perfect is to give it a stand. Yeah, I'm going to give it a stand. So check out this candelabra or candle stand or whatever you want to call it. Apparently it had a glass top or something on there. But anyway, I got it at Goodwill because it was broken. Apparently nobody else wanted it. And I grabbed it. I'm getting it a good cleaning with a fresh baby wipe. And then um, I'll show you. It's actually from Ikea. Is that not the coolest thing? Yeah. I'm just going to take the top of this fat, tall base. And I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my birdhouse. And there's no wax on the bottom of the birdhouse. Because if you would have done that, um, it wouldn't stick very good. Very good at all. So I'm just going to hold it down until it gives it a minute to catch. 
Oh, easy. This is probably the easiest one, but it, you know, it does have a little, little something to it, a little technique, a little effort. So I'm taking that same watered down antiquing wax and my brush, and I'm just going to go over the roof. I'm going to give this a brown top. You don't have to do this. You can paint yours. You could use the solid wax technique like I used on the last birdhouse. You could even shingle this like we did on the first birdhouse. So see, I'm having a hard time here with that wax. So let me show you what I do here in a minute to get that trim nice and colored without flicking that paint all over the rest of my birdhouse because we won't be staining that. We're gonna be painting it and I don't wanna make a mess. Waxy substances do not like to stick to paint so substances. So I'm just gonna take it on my finger and just rub it down into those little cracks. What about that? Or finger painting, y'all. Finger painting. And it does the trick. It does perfectly. I'm going around all the edges of that raw wood there to make sure that it's all covered up. And then the underneath part, we're just going to use paint for that. So I'm taking this light mocha. Use whatever color you like. And three sides of this house and the underneath parts of the roof are all going to be covered with this mocha paint. Hey, if you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. If you are from Devin's channel, I want to say a big welcome and thank you for coming over. I have known Devin for quite some time now on YouTube and on Instagram, and that's a hard-working girl right there. She has unique DIYs, and she's such a spiritual person. It's really uplifting to talk to her and follow her journey, so just be sure that as soon as you finish watching mine, you go over there and check her out. Okay, here are some rub-ons that I got from Dollar Tree. They also have a variety of really cute stuff depending on what style you like. And I know that I'm going to be using this, this transfer. I've used it on other projects and I will be using it again. I just kind of get an idea of which section I want to use. And the reason we painted that front part white is because I really want this to stand out. So I like the rose one, the rose section, and I'm going to be working with it. I'm just making sure that I have enough room here to put it on and then I'm going to take my little cutters here and just cut the little stem off. So the little part where they stand or the perch, I just removed it so that I could lay this straight down. But don't worry, we're going to put the perch back. We don't want the bird to be confused and not be able to get into its home. Alright, I'm using just a regular popsicle stick to rub this down. Don't worry if you did like I just did and pressed it down and made it kind of messy because you can fix it so easily with these stamps or these um, rub-ons. You can't take it off once it gets on there, in my experience anyway, but you can certainly fix it. So what's left on there are a couple of extra leaves and things that didn't transfer. Just overlap wherever you need um, a piece. And look at that. I totally covered up my mistake there. I'm going to take an awl and just dig down in here and make it flat, clean it up nicely, and decide what kind of perch I want to use. So I thought, you know what, a little button and a bead would be perfect here. I've glued down the button and now I'm just gluing the little, it's kind of an oval shape oblong, you see there? Right down in the middle of the button and how cute is that? I think that is precious. I'm gonna take my little heat gun here and it came from Arteza, if anyone is curious, I love it. And I'm going to peel off my sticker Oh my gosh, game chaser, changer for sure because it saves me a ton of time not having to scrape. This is just a little piece of stuff that I found at Goodwill and I save these because you never know when you might need a base or an extra piece for something, you know? And it's gonna be perfect as a base for this and it's gonna be a little razor or a riser and it's just gonna lift it up and look at that, it's perfect. Here are our three birdhouses. I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love to know if you have any intentions of making any of these little birdhouses. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you think that you will try to make? They're easy, you know, with summer and spring here and coming up. It's the perfect time to get in your yard, to get on your porch. You know, if it's still snowy where you live, bring some of these things to life. I'm gonna start off with this one set of flower that I got thrifting. This little cardinal came from Dollar General. 
these are thrifted I don't know if that's a pomegranate or what that is as well as the berries and the little pine picks these little curly vines came from a larger vine in my yard just clipped those off when they were dried and this box is a stacking Christmas box from Dollar General this particular print on this box I got two years ago I believe and I've got a lot of these boxes they're really pretty so if you want to you can take your lid and put it on the side or you can put it underneath your arrangement just so that you can utilize it I'm gonna take this foam box block which came from the thrift store and I'm just gonna leave it inside of the plastic so it won't make a big mess and this way I can use it again and again and I'm gonna glue it down the stem is too long for this short arrangement that I want to make so I'm just gonna take my pliers and cut them down I'm going to put it in the middle and tilt it slightly to the slide to the side because I'm going to be doing something special underneath that flower in a little while. With the three of these pine picks, I am just going to put them around spaced fairly evenly around the box. These stems on these berries had seen better days, so I'm just going to go around them with the green floral tape. It's a waxed tape. It's not very sticky if you feel it. Uh, if you put a little tension on it, then it becomes adhesive and will stick to itself into the stem. So you just pull slightly as you twist and it will cover up the stem. Be sure when you get berries and florals from the thrift store that you give them a little a dusting, a wash up, whatever they might require, just to get them cleaned up. Get the dust off, give them a little bit of their life back. I'm trying to keep all of my greenery low and tight because I want this to be a short arrangement. I want it to be a small arrangement. And then place it across the arrangement from the other one. Don't worry about the foam showing because that's going to be covered in a moment. Look at my fingers. Ew. <laughs> Thankfully, it washes off pretty easily, but you never know when you're thrifting what you're going to come across. And how old it is there's no telling how old these picks were some of the little wires were kind of rusty looking so there's just no telling but for a traditional piece I think that the gold just really really looks good so I'm filling out down and around the edges and I'm just going through these pieces of vine that I have to see which ones I want to use we need a little a little flyaway or height in this and I think that these would look really good you can spray paint them if you want to but and it might might have been a good idea to maybe spray paint these gold since this is traditional but I think this this is gonna look good and it's nice to use something out of your own yard or from a hike that you take you can pick them up and use them in your decor and see the green is gonna blend in and then it's standing up there nice and nice and happily And I'm going to take some Spanish moss that is from my yard, let it dry out in the sun, and then you can use it in your arrangements. And I'm going to tuck that between the box edge and the foam. You can extend some of that Spanish moss up and onto the foam if you'd like. I wanted to add a little more greenery here, so I'm just taking some of those picks that I had laying there and placing them around in the open spots. Keeping in mind that to the high side of that flower in the back, I'm going to be needing some space to put my little cardinal friend. So I want to leave um, some space on that side while filling out this side. I'm going to add one more kind of greenery in here just because I can't, I can't stand not to. I just want to fill it up with all the green goodness. I'm going to add bunches of woodland wonder. So this is a hole that I left intentionally because this is going to be where we put our little bird's nest so our cardinal will have a place to live. I got that cardinal on a clearance sale at Dollar General two years ago when I got the boxes and it was 90% off. So I think it was only a dollar to begin with. So yeah, I got three of those. Now I'm just going to fill it out on the inside. I'm going to see how my bird, my bird is going to sit in there. Then I'm going to take some of that Spanish moss, wrap it around my hand a few times into a circle. And then there we have our little nest. And our cardinal goes right back on the inside. I'll use that. 
So this is a traditional arrangement for those of you who aren't particularly into the rustic or the farmhouse style. If you're not into neutral theme, this is the perfect one for you. And I love that it has a little peekaboo surprise on the side. I think that anyone would enjoy having this if it's something that you wanted to make for your, your grandmother, your mother, a sister. I think anyone would like having this in their home for Christmas. And I will see you again real soon. Bye. I'm going to use this gorgeous little Avon perfume holder. I find these kind of things all the time at the thrift store, and I've never thought to get one and use it for anything, but I'll be picking them up from now on. Look at all the class and beauty in that little thing. I'm going to take some Rust-Oleum Satin Nickel Spray Paint, and after I give that thing a good bath inside and out, I'm going to spray it, and then we're going to add some of this wax to it. So I took it apart and spray painted the two different pieces so we wouldn't have any gaps just like that and put it back together and she looks great already right wait till you see what happens when you put the wax on it I've never used the white wax before but I am sold on it I love being a plaid ambassador you get to try so many things and I love showing you guys different things and new techniques and this is just you're gonna love this I think you're really gonna like it so I'm just using this little brush that came from Dollar Tree and I'm swirling it into all of those textured areas on the owl's face. And it's almost like a feather pattern and all around his eyes, all around it, just like that. We'll be doing the bottom in just a minute. I was worried when I did this at first because I thought, oh, I think I waited about like just a few seconds and then I used my paper towel to start wiping it away and I'm just stunned by the way this looks this is absolutely gorgeous it looks old it looks like an antique um, look at that look how it brings out all of the dimension in those feathers it's just I'm amazed I'm really amazed so then I thought, okay, this is cool. This, this is going to work. And I went ahead and did all the bottom too. So all of his body got a good brush of this paint. Well, of this wax. And then again, wiping that off just a little bit. And then, of course, you're going to have to let it dry. But it's so pretty by itself. I really didn't have to do anything else. But since it's Christmas time, we're going to give him a little bit more. So I'm going to use a piece of greenery that I pulled off of another pick. I'm going to use a little bit of this jute. I'm going to wrap it around where the, I guess it would be the neck. It's where the bottle top meets the bottom. I'm going to kind of pull it down just a little bit. And then this is actually going to be too big. As you can see here, it's too big. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Not a problem. I do this all the time. Just a little minor surgery till we can get this looking exactly how we want it. Sorry, I'm out of range there. I got so excited with the waxing, I just totally stopped paying attention to the camera. So, then we're gonna tie that on. You can just tie a little double knot. That'll hold it in place. And then trim off the excess. You could do a bow if you wanted. But I really wanted the attention to be on the owl itself, and I didn't want to do too much to take away from his beauty. I'm going to add another pick on the top with a little bit of hot glue. Just kind of nestling it down there where the, the piece of the jute rope and the other greenery is. And you could stop right there if you wanted. But I think I'm going to add a little of this because it's going to help kind of bring all of our crafts in together. They're going to be coordinated. So with a little hot glue, I'm just going to put a couple of cut pieces into the little greenery pick just like that so pretty oh my goodness I want to put wax on everything now there won't be anything in my house that's not waxed okay so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue just to put that piece of greenery down owl Love them. Project number one is a yard flag wall hanger. We're going to use some of these 
um, pit berries from Dollar Tree. Use any ribbons you like. These came from the thrift store in some type of a kit, I think. And they're just little scraps of ribbon. These are two pieces that I got off of another project. It's just going to be the tops and bottoms. And then I thrifted this beautiful cardinal rustic looking yard flag. We're going to use some foam board. You can get yours at the Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted. And we're going to put it on top of something. You can either use your cutting mat or you can just measure it with a ruler, whichever way you want. And figure out what size you have because we want that foam board to be the backing for this project to make it sturdy. So measure that out and that's what I'm doing here. Just showing you that I'm measuring it out. And I'm going to be cutting it on top of my mat. I'm just using my rotary cutter, but you can use whatever you have to do this. I just find this is easier and it makes a cleaner line than using scissors. Sometimes you have to flip it over on the other side and then cut the other side as well. Because the paper, there's paper on the back and the front and, it'll, and there's foam in between, sandwich in between, and sometimes it'll be kind of messy. But you can clean your edges up also. I'm going to use my little glue stick here. And it's back to school time, so you can get a lot of good buys. Right now, Dollar Tree has the Jot. I think it's eight sticks in a pack, so that's a really good deal for your all of your crafting needs. And now I'm going to put down my flag right on top of that. And press it down with my hands to get any wrinkles out. And then I'm going to use my wallpaper smoother. And just smooth that right out. All the way to the edges, because we don't want anything to peel off. And you can go around the edges and reinforce that with some hot glue or any type of glue you have. Now you can see that there's a space that is still bare on the top and the bottom. And that's because I'm going to use something to trim this out. I'm just using regular strength hot glue here. This is going to be in the house. If you're going to put anything like this outside, which I really wouldn't recommend for this type of a project. But if you're going to put it outside maybe on a covered porch, you're probably going to want to use something like uh, Gorilla Glue, something that's stronger and it can deal with um, weather changes without falling apart. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this top and bottom. And really all you need to do, you can use paint sticks, you can use any type of scraps that you have. Just make sure that, you know, for this particular look that it's a longer on the sides than it is um, than the picture is and I'm just going to use my clamps and clamp this down because sometimes the foam boards will bow a little bit and I want to be sure that the glue is sticking down to my trim pieces same thing here and leaving that little space on the back ensures that we have plenty of that picture showing from the flag I don't want to cover up anything that I don't have to Very easy to go back and just fix any little areas that need a little extra love. And now we're going to start on embellishing this. And these pieces of ribbon are about 10 inches long. And all I'm doing is folding them over. So I'm making a loop on the top and squeezing those and holding those in the middle. I'm going to do that with lots of my ribbon. I've just kind of picked through and decided, you know, which ones look like they coordinate nicely and which ones are going to give me that rustic look that I enjoy in my house. And as you know, I have been adding more cottage type feel in my house. So I'm going to try to do that at Christmas time also. So be sure that you subscribe so when we do have Christmas content coming out, you won't miss anything. Now, if you don't feel comfortable holding this in your hand, use a clamp and put it together. And you see there's really no pattern um, for this. I'm going to take a zip tie. You can use a zip tie, floor wire, a pipe cleaner, a... Uh, 
a twist tie from a bread bag, if that's all you have. And just tighten this up really tightly in the middle. And then I'm going to cut off any excess and fluff out the bow. If you are going to go and buy some zip ties to use in crafting, it's you really might consider getting ones that the smallest one that you could possibly use to keep your project secure because right there where you see that little white square, that's going to cause some bulk and it is really difficult because you can't trim it down. It's really difficult to work around that. You have to glue it and then you're going to have like a little, almost like a little gap. It's not a big deal for everything, but if that kind of stuff bothers you, then you might consider getting smaller zip ties and you can get a variety of zip ties at the Dollar Tree. Very affordable and lots and lots and lots of them. I think the smallest ones I've seen are the black ones, but um, correct me if I'm wrong if there's something else that you've seen. Okay, this type of bow is what Ramon at Home refers to as a funky bow. And you pretty much you're gonna have all your tails poking out in every which way and you're gonna have all of your little loops poking out in every which way and makes a cute bow and these are really pretty too if you use them on a larger scale on bigger projects so we're just going to take that and decide where we want it to be and then hot glue it in place When I'm doing my crafting, I generally prefer when I'm adding bows to do it in the left corner. I don't know why. It just always feels right to me to put it over there. And I kind of go by how I feel about a project, you know, what feels right to me. So I do recommend that you do the same. Now I'm just going to take another piece of that. I'm going to make a really simple little bow. Just making a little loop, squishing it down in the middle, and then tying it off. Very, very simple. I'm doing a lot more of these little simple bows lately because I feel like they look better with um, the type of decor that's in my home. You do what, what you like. And I'm just going to add that little kitty right in the middle of that funky bow for a little extra interest. Now we're going to take some of this Pitberry Vine. I'll get it out in a minute. And you've seen me do this before in projects. We're just going to clip it off at whatever length that you like. Just be sure that you get, you know, several of those berries on the vine. And if you want to make a little twist out of this, a little spiral, you just wrap it around a pencil or whatever you have. And just slide it off the end and there you go. And then you can just add a little hot glue. And put those little pieces wherever you like. I feel like this was appropriate for this picture because of the branches in the background and because it's very snowy so it looked like little snow covered branches to me what do you think I think that really made a difference up there so now I'm just going to take some jute that I have and since conveniently enough there are little hangers on this I'm just gonna tie it off and get it to the length that I want it so simple. If you do not have hangers on your little scraps, all you have to do is hot glue it to the back or tie it on whichever way that you like to do it. You could use a staple gun if you've got a good quality thick piece of material. There you have it. Isn't that gorgeous? Alright, project number two is a wood block sign. Simple, simple. You can see the supplies that I'm going to start with. You know, I always end up going off, off plan here. So here's the card that I'm using, and this is just a card that I got from Goodwill. This is just a block that I got from, I think this came from Dirt Cheap. I've used, I bought several of these when I got them for like 10 cents a piece. So I am going to be using this one. I also used that sign in a, a Apple project that I did recently. It turned out really cute. So now I'm going to trim down my card. I've already cut it in half, as you saw, and I'm going to trim it down to the size that I like it. And pretty much it's going to be almost like an insert into the 
um, the wood block that we're using. I want the size of this to be smaller so it almost looks like a frame around it. There you go. And I sanded it down so it would look a little more rustic. I'm going to just take this glue stick and put it all over here. You can use Mod Podge for this if you like. But because I'm doing these videos and I want to get this material out for you quickly, it's generally easier because it dries faster just to use the glue stick. But the Mod Podge will probably last you longer. So I'm just smoothing this out. I love the cardinals and the little birds, and I think this looks really nice with the previous project that we did. And look at that candy cane jay. That's really cute. Joy is one of my favorite words. Definitely an encouraging word and something to live by. Now we're going to add a little extra something to this block. You can use ribbon that is a little smaller or the same size as the width of your block. And you can just trim it out. I did get this, this ribbon on clearance at Walmart. I got it around the 4th of July. I also got some navy blue and white, which I hope to be using in some projects soon too. And I'm just going to zigzag it a little so I don't have a big bulky glue line right in the middle. And smooth it out. I want this to look high end, so I'm just kind of zigzagging my line. I do this in a lot of projects where I use ribbon so that you don't see that line through the ribbon. And this seems to work for me. If you do see a little darkness under there, even though you've done a zigzag, when it dries, in my experience, that goes away and you don't see it at all. So we're just gonna continue going around here. So have y'all been watching a lot of Christmas in July videos? Is that something that interests you? I know a lot of people are like, no, not Christmas, we haven't even had fall. But it's important for crafters who, who sell their items to be able to get some inspiration before Christmas time so they can start working on their items. They usually do several of one project, so they gotta get, they gotta get a, ahead of the game a little bit. So I hope that my videos, the two videos that I've done for Christmas in July can be some inspiration for, for someone. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next part of this project. We're going to do a bow cut in the same length. I got about 12 inches of ribbon here. I'm going to just stack them on top of each other, double them up. Again, that same little simple bow that I hope you guys are using. Has anybody used this bow in your projects? It's so simple, but still pretty. Tied in the middle, I'm just using a little of that cotton twine that comes from Dollar Tree on the big spool. That's what I'm using. I'm gonna tie it up really tight. Gotta make sure that that bottom loop doesn't come loose. If it gets slack in it, you can't, the knot won't set up right. And when you start pulling on your bow, it'll come apart. So just be sure that that, that you make that very tight. And just slip that knot around to the back. And there you go. You can trim it up some more if you need to. And you can pull the layers of your bow apart. I wanted to add a little greenery to this, so I'm going to add a couple of pieces of this pick that I thrifted. And this is like some type of evergreen. Maybe pine, it looks a little bit like something like that. I'm just going to use some jute and tie that up in the middle, because we're going to make like a tiny little swag to go on here. Nothing real fancy, anybody can do this. Just put your picks opposite of one another, and then tie them in the middle. I don't want anything too heavy on here because I don't want my sign to fall over. This is something that should be able to stand on its own. You can tack down any of the pieces that you need to of your little branches there. Just be sure you protect your fingers when you do it. And rather than dovetailing, since this is a thin ribbon, I'm just going to cut it at a slant. Trim up that knot. 
and I'm gonna add it with some glue. I love these laundry clamps from Dollar Tree. They will hold stuff in place for you until it is set up. And there mine is all set up. Fluff the bow a little bit more and I'm just gonna add a red bead to it. There's red berries on this card so I thought this would be really cute right in the middle. Do you like to add those extra things to your bow or do you like the bow to just stand alone on its own? Sometimes I leave the bow alone and sometimes I add to it. Most of the times I think I add to it. And there you go. Project number is three is going to be a hanging bird nest decor. This is thrifted. A little thrifted piece. A little bird. And then this is something that I got on clearance at Michael's or at, yeah, I think it was Michael's several years ago. Lots of beautiful scrap in here, scrap paper. And you just go through there and find something that you think you like. And I'm going to be picking two pieces from here. And this came from the Dollar Tree. This dreaming sign. And it reminded me of Christmas trees. So guess what we're going to be making? You got it. I'm going to start off by removing all the paper. Remove it however you have to. Whatever, whatever technique you use, go ahead and use that. Sometimes it'll peel off kind of easily like this. And sometimes you got a big mess. These pieces of galvanized letters, I'm going to tell you, they are very, very fragile. So if you want to keep those, you're going to have to be very delicate with them because they will snap right off. Do you see what happened there? It's still hanging by a thread, but barely. I'm just going to go in there and just work around those letters. I should have got a close-up of this. I don't know what it is, but I really enjoyed myself taking these letters off. Who doesn't love a makeover, right? I mean, whether it's projects or houses or clothing or whatever. It's always fun to see how you can take one thing and turn it completely into something else. Right out of your mind, whatever idea you have, into something else. So I'm choosing two pieces of paper that I like. And I think this one's pretty. And this one with the tree is very pretty. It's very vintage looking to me. Then I'm just going to hold it down and then press around on my edges so I can find the outline of where we need to be cutting. This is not nearly as complicated as I'm sure that I will make it. So just watch what I'm doing. I creased it with my fingers and now I'm just going to crease it with that metal uh, ruler and then folding it over so I can see where my edge is and then I'm going to go right down where this crease is and rub that with a ruler because it's kind of hard to crease it without cutting it because there's a gap between the two triangles but you can definitely get a crease in it right there so I'm just going to follow that crease line all the way down to cut that triangle out and that's what you're seeing me do here. See right there? There you go. But you certainly don't have to do it that way because it's going to be covered up. I just made it very complicated. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this other side. I wanted to leave this in rather than editing it out so that you could see again that all you have to do is just crease it. You can't see it on the camera, but I could see it. You know, you can see it when you're doing it in person. You can you can tell where you put your little lines. You can use scissors, you can use a blade, you can glue this on first and then cut it off with an X-Acto knife, which probably would have been the easiest way to do it. Um, whichever way that you want to do it. Make it easier on yourself. It doesn't have to be as difficult as I made it look. Okay, here we go with the glue stick again. I'm just coating this down with glue. And then I'm going to add my pieces of paper back on it. I love the purple glue stick. Okay, no more glue stick talk. I've said enough. Then you're going to put that down and put your other piece down. And you can see here I went back and trimmed off that extra.
Then you're just going to take your knife and go back and cut off the excess. See what I mean? And this is how it looks when you flip it over. Nice and pretty. I'm going to take my sanding block and just go down those edges and clean that up. This is going to press it down and it is also going to take off any edges that I didn't uh, cleanly cut. And it's also going to give it like a white or a worn look on the edges, which I like in my projects. I found that doing this makes it look like you bought it this way. And it's, I mean, we're trying to create high-end looks, so it kind of goes along with the idea. So now we have two little Christmas trees. What do you think about that? I'm going to take a screwdriver and this piece of wood and just split it right down the middle. It already had a split in it. These pieces of wood came from the Dollar Tree in a little bag. It's over where the sand and the little rocks are. If you can find them at your Dollar Tree. These will be our tree trunks. Ideally, you want to put them where the tree trunk would be on a tree. We're going to work on our little birdie here. I'm just cutting the hanger off because apparently he was an ornament. Excuse my sniffles. It's allergy season here. Okay, and I'm going to... It looks like somebody just made this, really. It was kind of dirty looking and... Yeah. I'm just gonna take it off and I was very happy that it pretty much came straight off didn't leave any residue on my little metal bird or anything you know clean up just get the little fuzz off of his hat and decide how I want his little hat to look and he's gonna be very happy living in those trees next we're gonna make him a nest he's found his home now it's time to settle in so I'm just going to loop over this vine and you can see that it's going to make a little nest for him. And the little berries on it make it look like snow, which is appropriate for the winter time I believe. I've just twisted it in the middle and then we're going to add a little bit of greenery to that. Just on one side, like he's sitting on a branch. He's going to add my hot glue, and to keep it from pulling up, I'm going to clamp it down. And then I'm going to snip the ends of these vines. They're twisted in the middle so they're safely secured in there. Add another piece if you need to to hold it together. But then I'm gonna rough it up and clip them apart. I lost a branch. Now it looks more like sticks. So once the glue is dried I'm gonna add my nest in there. Oh, how cute is this going to be? So cute. I'm going to add some hot glue on the branch. Tuck that little nest right in there. Make it pretty for our little bird. Then I'm going to add a bit of glue there because he's metal and sometimes metal doesn't want to stick to the glue. So I'm hoping it will go through some of those little openings there. I'm going to add a dot of hot glue and press the tail of the hat down so that it's folded over. I like that look better than sticking straight up. You can find little bird ornaments everywhere in the winter time. Hopefully you can thrift some early and hopefully your Dollar Tree will have something that you can use instead. You can definitely use a bird without a hat. And you can get those any time in the summer, pretty much anywhere. Now I've trimmed down my little pieces of tree stumps or tree trunks. I'm going to add some strong Gorilla Glue. Put that on the bottom. So there's one trunk for one tree. 
and then here's the trunk for the other tree gonna add some hot glue and press that in place to make sure that it sits still and you can see me sliding it over to make sure that it was centered just like that then I'm gonna make another one of those little bows you should be a pro at these bows now at the end of this video as we made several I think we made one for every project we have haven't we we've just done it in different ways tie it in the middle with a little piece of jute or smaller ribbon or the same ribbon if you want to whichever way you like it trim that off of there and then we're gonna make little tree toppers So this is the same ribbon that I got from um, that thrifted pack. All this came together and I just went through and decided which ones look the best for each little tree. So I'm adding one bow to the top of each tree. The little birdie decorated his tree, his little tree house. I love the idea of birds and cardinals at Christmas time, especially if you've heard of the story of the cardinal and that when you see one, that means that it's the spirit of a loved one coming back to visit. And after last year being so terrible and there was so much loss, I think this is the perfect way to remember those who are not with us this Christmas. You could always use a bead on the top or a star or... You could even use a sticker if you wanted to. You could use a pine cone, you could use some more greenery, anything that you want on the top. Or if you get your papers all the way to the top, maybe you have larger paper and it covered the entire thing. You don't have to put anything on there at all. But I thought this was really cute. Now we have the original hanger back there and that's how I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it to hang. I'm not gonna stand it on its little trunk pieces there. So what do you think about this one? We have three Christmas in July pieces, and here I am showing you how they look together. What do you think about these? Will you be using any cardinals in your Christmas decor this year? Thank you okay. so much for Clip watching. Number two. We are taking this one solitary napkin that I found at Goodwill and this embroidery wreath, this thick wooden large wreath. And then I have some thrifted ribbon and I also have some ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just decided to show you the measurement of this and this is about a 14 inch, I think, um, loop. So if you know anything about these loops, you just loosen the screw and you take the top layer off. I'm laying my napkin on the bottom or the inner ring and I'm going to center the top over that line where it was folded. And what you're going to do is push that down, tighten the screw a little bit at a time, and instead of having to iron out the napkin, if you will pull from both sides evenly, as you tighten it down a little bit at a time, you will have no wrinkles and you will have no lines left, um, no fold lines left in your, um, in your napkin. This looks French farmhouse to me. What do you think? All right, and I'm just going to take my napkin and you could cut this off at this point if this is something that you want to do, but I'm just gonna take mine, roll it under and then tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. I'm protecting my fingers because I will be likely coming in contact with that glue, doing it this way. You're just gonna tuck and roll down to just try to make a neat little finished back. This is gonna help protect if you put it against a surface, it will keep you from having scratches on your surface. And you're just gonna do this all the way around the hoop.
you know, at first when I got this napkin, I was disappointed because I only had one, but then I thought, hey, when I saw it with that crop, I thought, yeah, I know what I'm going to do with that. So I've just taken a loop of burlap string, or uh, excuse me, jute string here, and put it across the center of that screw in the middle of that square piece up there. Not all the wreaths had such a thick um, block up there, but in this case it's a good thing because it's going to give me some place to put the bow that I'm fixing. So I'm just going to make loops in this. Um, it's like a denim wired ribbon and I'm just going to make loops and I think, I can't remember exactly what my measurement was, but I think I have like a seven inch um, across. So I have three loops on either side and I'm cutting it off without a tail. So there it is, just the loops. I'm going to do the same thing with this burlap and lace piece. There are going to be three loops. If you turn it over on the side, you can count three and then three. Cut off the excess here. Fold it in half. And then you're going to take your scissors, cut just through the wire and just a bit onto the fabric. I've seen this done by a couple of crafters, but the lady who comes to mind is Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home. And she calls this her Olivia bow. It's called lots of things, but this is what I'm going to do with mine. So um, the thinner ribbon is the one with the burlap. It's actually not quite as wide as the blue, so I'm going to put it on top. It actually, for some reason, ended up being a little bit bigger. My loops did because I didn't measure it, but that's okay. Not going to be a problem. You'll see what happens. So don't get disappointed if you do something like that. That's an easy, easy thing to remedy. I'm going to tightly tie this. You can use a pipe cleaner for this, or you could also use a zip tie if you needed to. But this piece of scrap jute works fine for me. Tying a knot in it, and I'm going to start by pulling out the inner loops of each one. And because you cut it, you'll be able to pull it away and out. And it helps for each little section of that bow to stand up nicely. It gives it a lot of leg room to stretch out. We're gonna do this all the way around. And the same thing with the top layer. We're gonna pull it out and to the side. And it's going to make a nice little pretty bow. I think the colors look great together. Love that denim ribbon. I've had a lot of use out of it and I'm going to miss it when it's gone. So now we're going to do the tails. Got a piece of the blue under and a piece of the burlap on top. Just going to look for our center point. I'm going to kind of bunch it up there. and then tie it also with a piece of jute. Always know that you have op options. If it came down to it and you had nothing else, you can use a twist tie from a bread loaf. You know, we make it work when we craft. And I'm just showing you here how you can just use your fingers to curl the edges if you want it curled. You can do any type of bow you like. If you want something more simple, you could do like a, a shoelace type bow or just a, a two layered bow. Maybe you would want to do a bow with just one loop on each side. So hold that down for a bit until it's dried. You can usually tell because the, the glue will get a little bit cooler. You won't feel the warmth from it if you're using your bare fingertips, but be careful when you do that. Always be safe. I'm just using a clamp to hold it there so I can go ahead and dovetail those ends without causing um, my bow to move around and then, you know, pull it loose possibly from the glue if it's not dried. So there you go. There are the pretty little tails. You can make them longer and curl them if you wanted to. But I didn't want anything to obstruct the view of my beautiful rooster in the middle. That's some remnants of chalk paint on my bow from the back of the where I had sanded on another project. 
it got a little messy back there but you won't see it it's gonna be down so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat that right we don't sweat the small stuff I know you've heard me say that so you're gonna put a good bit of glue there look where you're putting it to make sure that it is over the tails and that it is on top of the block there I'm gonna use the clamp to help me out here don't worry when things get smushed down you can always fix it back that wire and the bows make it so much easier for you to just fluff everything back out and then once it's had ample time to to dry and to sit up you can remove your clamp and then your project will be complete Isn't this great? This could be in your house all year long. I love it. It's especially going to be nice, I think, through the summertime. Thank you for stopping by, and I've picked another video I think you're going to love. Be sure to subscribe for more. See you soon. Bye!